Hi, I'm Kira Jones, and I am one of the actresses in Capital Force. Hi, I'm Addison Hyman, and I'm the creator and producer, and I also one of the little gay chorus members in Capital Force. <laughs> And, and this, this is, is our Mr. Media interview. <laughs> you do that, right? Okay. I think that helps me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite honestly, there aren't many gay, lesbian, bi, trans, or generally queer superhero characters in Marvel or DC comic books or movies. DC TV shows on the CW, however, have become much likelier to showcase supers that play for the same team, such as Batwoman, Batman's younger cousin, bisexual Sarah Lance from DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Nyssa on Arrow, Supergirl's sister, Alex Danvers, the first trans superhero on TV, Dreamer, also on Supergirl. Lightning, Black Lightning's daughter on Black Lightning. And Kid Flash, the character of which is straight, but is played by an admittedly bi actor. So if you are a gay screenwriter looking for an opportunity to break through, writing an LGBTQ superhero series for TV might seem like a good move right about now. It certainly worked for Northwestern University graduate Addison Hyman, the creator of Kappa Force, a new series inspired by his love of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and debuting on Reverie, Pluto TV, and Zumo on October 27th. The series stars Madeline Weinstein, who was in the original Broadway cast of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. In addition to Addison, also joining us is Kira Jones, a Chicago-based actor, filmmaker, and educator who plays Alexa on Kappa Force. She is the co-creator and co-star of The Right Swipe on OTV, plays Maya on Seeds, also on OTV, and guest stars in Geek Lounge on Amazon Prime. She's also appeared on Chicago Justice on NBC. Addison Hyman and Kira Jones... Super welcome to Mr. Media. Hi, thanks for having me and yeah. Addie. Yeah, both <laughs> of us. <laughs> Delighted to have you both here. Um, I, I want to start with Addison. Um, you created uh, Kappa Force. I'm guessing from what I've seen uh, that you must have spent uh, oh, uh, at least a little of your time in, in, in life so far reading some comic books and maybe going to a small to medium-sized college somewhere in the Midwest. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I did go to a small to medium-sized college uh, somewhere in the Midwest, um, and so did Kira, and so did a lot of people who worked on it, but we did Yeah, currently yeah. at that small to medium college somewhere in the Midwest. This is my office, because I now work there. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so uh, which, co- which small to medium college did you attend, or are you currently w- involved with, each of you? Northwestern University. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we're like, so yeah. Cat- Girl. Go cats. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. And uh, yes, of course, comic books for sure were uh, something that I grew up. But like, not like like the like Marvel comics or the DC comics. I was into more like like the indie kind of comics, like um, like Ghost World and like Scott Pilgrim versus the World. I guess everything that includes World. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but like, I. Yeah, um, you know, it's just, I love superheroes, and I love humor. Is that dumb? But I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, um, uh, and and Kira, we, uh, did, did you ever have any interest in comics or any of that kind of stuff? So, um, I grew up in a very nerdy family. Like, my dad is a huge nerd. Like, if you look at pictures from the Capital Force premiere, he's wearing a Black Panther tie. Um, and my brothers love comic books and I feel like I I was very anti growing up. Like I didn't like anything that other people like. If I knew people liked something, I didn't like it. Like I didn't read Harry Potter because I was like, too many people like this. Um, and I didn't listen to Avril Lavigne because I was like, too many people like, I mean, Avril Lavigne sucks, but. Okay, (laughs) hold on. Avril Lavigne and Harry Potter are two different things. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I know. I know. But like I'm saying, I was very anti as a child. And also my older brother wouldn't share his Harry Potter books. My mom was like, I'm not buying two copies of these expensive ass books. So deal. But anyway, beside the point. 
So I actually never really got into the comic books because I would get dragged by my brothers and my dad to like the comic book movies and they would never take me to see movies that I wanted to see. So I was like bad about it. But I I do now in my adulthood really enjoy like the Marvel movies, the DC movies. Uh, but I do, I, I am, I, I do really appreciate um, the things that I have seen. And I think I'm like, I'm going to try to like reframe my thinking. I think also just like, there's only a handful of uh, comic books that like feature like women of color. There are, you know, more than I, that I wear of and more than are in the like uh, general um, public's awareness. So I think I just need to dig deeper and kind of maybe talk to Addison about the indie comic books that, that feature people who look like me. So <laughs> interesting. All right. And um, uh, there's also, Oh, I don't know, a little bit of humor. Uh, in Kappa Force, uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess uh, Addison, do you want to address that? Do you, where does that Talk come about, from? Where does humor come from? Um, I mean, man, influ- I, influ- influences, uh, thing, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. I was going to be like back in ancient Greek times. I'm sure some guy <laughs> fell on a banana. Uh, no, um, yeah. You know, I basically, <laughs> uh, I say this, but every time I'm just like, now that I'm actually doing interviews for it, I feel like I'm going to get uh, my blasted on it for it but like i i well i'm a huge buffy the vampire slayer fan obviously like every gay kid and like growing up in the 90s and early 2000s was i actually thought i was special and then i moved to la and i started talking about that was my major influence and everyone was like yeah every gay every gay man grew up loving buffy the vampire slayer and i was like cool cool i'm not special hmm. um That's but it's fine reason. it's fine well can I'm i sorry what can it's special I, for other reasons. Well, yes, yes, yes. But can I can I ask you something there? Now I'm 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 not a gay man. I, I uh-huh. uh, but I I actually did not know that Buffy the Vampire Slayer was so influential on the gay gay men. Oh, but why yeah. is that? Why is that? I can't. Um, well, one, it's like features one of the first like lesbian relationships, like I think in like modern television that wasn't like, oh, I'm dying, like of AIDS. Uh, and two, like, it's just, it's just very queer just in general, like the, the overactiveness and like kind of the campy, I feel like camp in general is like a very queer kind of comedy where, you know, come, <laughs> coming from like drag shows and like all this kind of like, it's just kind of like instilled in our kind of bones in terms of like what the stuff that we grew up in and gravitated towards. So just like the fact that that camp is there and like, obviously like gay men are always looking for like strong female leads. I, I honestly can't explain why, but also like I, that is like one of my favorite type of genre, even though like I think the term strong female lead is like a kind of, can we swear on this? I don't actually know if we can or not. Want me to... I, you, the, you, the, the, you're fine. You go right well, okay, so it's it's a bullshit kind of concept just in general. But I will say, like, the – I don't know. I mean, it's just, like, you know, there are hot 90s dudes. I mean, like, Xander's in a Speedo at one point. So, like, obviously I've got, like, my little queer awakening there. But, like, it's just – it's just – it feels like a, a very – I don't know, it felt very inclusive, it felt very funny, and it felt, like, very much, like, my humor, like, and I, uh, you know, I'm really glad that my, you know, straight boy or father really, for some reason, liked it, too, so that was, like, the reason that I got into it, um, but, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, and, Kira, does Buffy the Vampire Slayer do anything for you? Was it, I mean, you didn't like anything that was popular, so I'm thinking, no. I feel like I feel like Buffy the Vampire Slayer was not like the level of popularity of uh, Laver Levine, but I <laughs> I feel like it kind of just had its like cult following. So I feel like it's something that I would have been into, but I guess I just didn't watch it. I don't know. Um, I just tend to not. Uh, I feel like I need to catch up on some of my like you know um, '90s TV shows because. Um, what was I watching? <laughs> Jesus, so I, I, I knew it was. I knew it existed, but I just never watched. I saw the musical episode. My gay high school theater teacher made us watch the musical episode in an episode in, in a class. But that's as much as I've seen. I've heard of wonderful things about it, though. I can play all of the musical episode songs on guitar. I think that's kind of why I learned guitar. <laughs> I'm such a loser, <laughs> but. You know what? I actually used to sing it back when I did musical theater. I used to sing What You Feel for auditions. And everyone's like, where is that song from? And I was just like, um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And they're like, whoa. 
oh. And I'm just like, cool. Not that I like, well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. I'm amazing. Uh, but just said that song. <laughs> I'm not incredible at guitar, but I'm fine. All right. And so. I don't know. Yeah. Well, so, uh, so Kappa Force is, mm. a, is described broadly as an LGBTQ comedy. Uh, mm-hmm. a sa- a satire, if you will, on c- uh, mm-hmm. camp and on superheroes and that type mm-hmm. of thing. Um, now, I've seen the f- what I guess are the first eight episodes. Yes, right. Uh, they're about five to eight minutes apiece. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. It's not overly gay. I mean, it's not like uh, you know. I mean, I, I I watch, for example, I watch DG's DC's Legends of Tomorrow, mm-hmm. which, for what I've seen so far here. Not, I mean, one is not too much gayer than that. That's got a major lesbian uh, 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 plot line running through it, and it's sometimes I'm, uh, it seems a little graphic for uh, you know eight o'clock at night uh, on on a, on major network. And then I watch Kappa Force, and I don't know, it hasn't seemed overly gay in the sense that a non-gay audience wouldn't enjoy it. Oh, for sure. Um, two things I'll say. Uh, one, um, like, uh, it's queer in terms of the sense of the creative team. Um, I'm queer myself. My director is queer. Like, half the people who worked on it were queer. Um, and, like, I think we, it's time to, like, reframe the idea of, like, what we, what we deem as, like, queer content. Hmm. It's queer in terms of its, like, representation and in terms of, like, who is involved and, like, also the type of people who were involved. And it's – I'm – tired of existing in a world in which queer is a like kind of category of something and so and also remember like the difference between like something like like saying legends of tomorrow which is like a major queer storyline it's like this is like essentially like the first season or like the first 46 minutes of the pilot like in my mind and at state university and in capital force everybody's queer everybody's on the spectrum there's no there's nobody that's like 100 percent straight even the douche who's like literally the most you know, like, but that's where you get the homoerotic undertones between him and Brock and, like, you know, um, all, I, in my mind, all of the uh, Kappa Force um, uh, women are, like, on some form of a queer spectrum. And also, like, me and, I, like, me and the other, like, Guy Patrick who play, like, the kind of, like, co- chorus are also, like, essentially gay. So, like, it's the idea that, like, I want to live and create queer content that is not what you said can like focus on and like, ast- like be like accepted by like the entire community. But if you are queer, you watch it and you're like, Oh, that's really queer. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's like that kind of stuff. It's just like, w- like I'm not necessarily like putting out like, you know, like this is gay, this is gay, this is gay. But also like I created a world in which like, you know, like that Kira embodied and I think other people embodied in which is just like people who are not them like, white straight dudes existing in superhero outfits and getting to exist in the world. And like, that is the world that I can create and would rather live in than just, and like have like super queer undertones. And if we get to make more seasons, get to explore more of that queerness and more of that idea of like what it means to be queer in this kind of like satirical college world. Got it. And Kira, how did you get involved in all this? Um, yeah, I, I auditioned. <laughs> uh, but I do just want to add to like what Addison was saying about the the show being queer um, is that like um, people like queer people exist in the world and like not every action that they take is because of their queerness like you know so you know we, we're creating a world that you know while it's like fantastical and campy it's still like these people living their lives and like getting their education like they're not they're not going to be having like gay sex at every like moment um exactly queer people have also like had to enjoy straight you know media for so long like and had to like find ways to relate to that like so i don't under you know there's no reason that straight people can or should not also be able to relate to uh queer characters or queer shows so um, i'm really excited that uh addison and other um queer filmmakers are making opportunities for, you know, only for um, artists and actors uh, on the LGBTQ spectrum to like be able to play 
roles that feel close to them, um, that aren't stereotypes, but also like giving um, the straights an opportunity to like see into, you know, um, our experiences and be like, oh, actually, huh, it's really not like Brokeback Mountain. Like not, we're not all just having like butt sex on the mountains. Like some of us are going to college. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, I want to make sure I get this. Some are having butt sex on Brokeback Mountain. Some yeah. are going to college. Yeah, not yeah. to invalidate the butt sex on the mountain experience. I got Listen, it. butt sex is great, but I was trying to create a TV14 atmosphere. <laughs> so, like, you know, we can't show. It's like I want to do, like, the friends thing. It's like all of a sudden they, like, lie back in bed and I'm like, oh, they just had sex. But, like, you know, like, no one exists like that in the real world. But, no. you know, if we're going to be on the CW or Reverie, um, you know, we got to, well, they would have they would have accepted TVMA, but that wasn't what I was going for, you know. So, uh, so when I go back you know, to look for a great quote from this, the butt sex is great, but, okay, I got it. <laughs> go ahead, Kira, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah, no, so uh, I auditioned for, for the show, but Addison and and I went to Northwestern and but we didn't actually know each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, like many of my now good friends, like uh, went to Northwestern together. We're probably like busy kind of hiding in our holes um, and like didn't actually poke out our head enough to like see the other like dope queer people around. Um, so Addison and I became friends after we graduated. Um, and I remember him telling me like, oh, I have this you know, series that I'm writing. It's really awesome about these, you know, sorority girls who have like a crime fighting squad. And I was like, this sounds like really amazing and like nothing else that's out there right now. And then, you know, a few months later, you know, he was having auditions and I uh, went in and I was better than everybody else. So <laughs> <laughs> I should also mention that Kira is also like a, a filmmaker and a writer and her own self. She's got a she's got a web series called The Right Swipe, which is just fantastic. And it's like again, in terms of like queer people just existing and like people of color just existing in worlds, like it's very much like a rom com, like a dating rom com, but like with like like queer people of color in the actual focus. And like that is again what we're talking about in terms of like queer content being relatable to the masses, but also just like having us exist in real world situations and not being like the tokenness or the tokenness. Mm -hmm. um, and like, that's like, I think, I mean, like, uh, I, I, I guess maybe I just put words in your mouth here, but like, that's kind of like, I don't know, like, like the kind of content that we're trying to make, you know? Yeah. Well, I know uh, growing up, uh, growing up in the seventies, <clears throat> sixties and seventies, wow, I'm old. Um, uh, you know, if, if there was ever a gay character and that really happened very late uh, in that period, it would be, a big deal because we never saw gay characters. It's just like, uh, you know, when uh, Nichelle Nichols kissed Captain uh, 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 William Shatner on, on Star Trek. That was the mm -hmm. first time that something like that had ever happened, an interracial kiss. And then, so when there would be gay characters, let's say in the late 70s, even in, in the early 80s, it was like, tune in next week for a very special episode of Different Strokes or, you know, whatever the case might be. And yeah. that, that was unfortunate. I always thought, well, why do we have to... Why does it have to be a big deal? Why can't we just have gay characters or or or, or, or African American characters or you know Asian American characters, whatever the case may be? But I guess it just took time because it was so the opposite of inclusive uh, all that time. And I know if, if if you're in one of these groups that we're referring to, it still seems like it's slow and it's not. There's not enough opportunity. Yeah, for sure. I mean. I definitely see, even within the last, like, you know, couple years, the the transition that's happening. Like, there's still way more that can be done. But it's, like, I don't have to, like, dig deep into the depths of, like, you know, the 500 channels on Comcast to find, like, uh, you know, content that has queer people, uh, people of color. Like, you know, Pose is super popular. I just watched... a. Uh, gay threesome between three people of color happened on primetime TV on um, how to get away with murder. I was like, what? Okay, Shonda. Oh, good. <laughs> I like that. that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there's, you know, shows like Blackish and Grownish and mixed, like, you know, these, these shows are getting like spinoffs because obviously people like want the content. Um, so that's been, it's been cool to watch. Um, I do still think that there's way more room to, go like Addison and I have both been on the film festival circuit and very frequently like especially in the web series or like independent television category I will be the only woman of color writer hmm. or like the only woman writer like at all and so um 
it's great that we are seeing representation more with the characters on screen, but like, what does the representation behind the camera look like is actually matching that. Um, so I think that's like the, while we still need to do more as far as like uh, the storylines that we're writing and the characters are creating, like what op- job opportunities are we also giving to um, underrepresented um, filmmakers? So that was like, my, I think Addison and I both really strove to make sure that like our production teams looked like the world of the shows we were creating, um, which was really great because I, you know, usually don't get on a set and it's not anything but like straight white dudes and like backwards caps. Like, yeah. you know, our, like Addison was the creator and um, our uh, Hannah Welliver, the director, is queer woman, our producer Ramon is black man. Like, that was like, I was like, oh shit, like there's people that aren't named like Chad and, you know, actually like wash their shirts that, that do film. Great. <laughs> There was no one named Jesse Bradford in the uh, in the cast crew. No? Uh, I'm going to no, ask you about that. Hold on to that. I'm going to come back to that one. That yeah, that, okay. that made me laugh for a different reason. Um, so you guys met at Northwestern, and I've been wanting to ask: Did you go through a film program? Did you go through an acting program? Were you in separate we went programs? Through an, we went through an acting program, but uh, Curious a couple years younger than me. But like Northwestern is like they pay you with the same uh, acting like. Uh, teacher for like three years and then like they shoot you out and then you're just like all right we're gonna teach you nothing about the business we're gonna teach you nothing about anything we're just gonna be like figure it out and so like in which and like you know chicago which carrie still lives in and, and i lived in for a long time it was like it, it was like a dog eat dog world where like you had to wait for people to either like choose you to become a part of this community or you can create your own so it's like that uh and neither kira and i did uh, theater or, uh, sorry, film at all. So like, I don't know what I was doing. And so it was like finding those people that like when I met actually Emily Modaf and they um, introduced me to Hannah and then like we, she, she, Hannah read my script. We just like, you know, formed and then like that was how, and very much testament to her, like getting the crew and, and everything. Like, cause, Cause you know, obviously Capital Force didn't happen in a vacuum. I didn't, I created it. And like, you know, here and 17 actors embodied it, but we had like a 30 person crew. And also like, our musical parodies took like a whole other crew of like 30 people and like our editor and a co- like hundred people at least at this point have made this show. So it's just like in all those people, like, you know, like centered around this thing. And it, it was, um, honestly quite crazy. Um, because like it takes a world, something that I learned with creating like theater takes like, you know, like people, but like film takes people. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and if you're just like, and I'm sure Kira knows that she's made, her uh her web series as well it's just like it is a lot of work and a lot of money and a lot of like begging people to do things for free or no money especially when you don't have you know like uh, like million dollars of budgets that like actual tv shows have um yeah which is a huge testament to like how great capital force is um because so much of the film that is being made, or especially like you know web series independent film is being made by like the white dudes in chicago is like trash um and so and they're paying you to make trash so um the fact that there so when there is a, like a really good project like even if you know the filmmakers behind it particularly if they're minority filmmakers like don't have the money to pay the uh folks like what they would be making on bigger budget projects like just the ability to be in a room with like people uh, filmmakers who look like you working on a project that's exciting to you is not something that like we always get the opportunity to do so like it's fulfilling in in a number of different ways and addison did pay us all like you know there's a lot of web, there's a lot of web series out here that are like um we'll give you like um a packet of ritz crackers and like credit on imdb and you're mm-hmm. like no <laughs> so well, addison did pay us which is great so kira <laughs> I, I want to be clear about something now so if when the spinoff uh chicago sanitation uh is casting are you saying that you are not? You want to let them know ahead of time that you're not interested in any roles? Um, so I was already on Chicago Justice. Yes, uh, you can't be on <laughs> another one of the Chicago shows for at least 17 years. Yeah, I can't be on it until uh, I die. But uh, then I can be one of the dead bodies. But, right. um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna take the money. Look, okay, like I will take the money. Um, and I hear that like those those shows are you know a great experience to work on. Is it? Well, I, would I say that like the Dick Wolf shows are like my end goal as a as an artist, not necessarily. Um, but like, I'm glad that those shows exist and are you know employing, um, giving people steady employment here in Chicago. 
Okay. Yeah. And um, right, Kira, Kira, tell me about your your character in Kappa Force. Oh yeah, Alexa. Um, which is she's so you gave her such a close name to my actual name because. <laughs> My middle name is Alexis, oh. and my last name is actually Jones. So her name yeah. is Alexis Jones. And you did it. You did this before. You I happened. did. I did. Uh. <laughs> okay. But I will say, like at the read through, like Alexa wasn't as um, like I had the read through, and then I heard her and our uh, one of our characters, Lavender, played by Elle Walker, like do their banter, and I was like, oh, they need more lines. Like they're like, I was like, they're too funny. And so like because I cast here, I was able to like create more of a thing, but I'll let you talk about your character since it's your character. Thank you for giving me more lines. That's always fun to like, you know, when the actors embody the the characters you created, like, oh, actually, like, now I'm going to change the character. Like, you brought something new to the role, um, which has been, which is really cool. But, um, so Alexa is one of the members of Capo Force. Um, she is a, a sophomore? She's a sophomore? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't even know what year she is. Uh, but she, um, is the uh, weapons expert. Uh, so she makes all the cool gadgets. Um, she has like um, this like little like bomb that she throws at like douchebags, which is great. Um, and she um, is kind of the, the like wise ass uh, of the group. Like she uh, will tell people like what she thinks about them. Um, and she is, I'm really excited to see like how, cause you actually only get a little bit of interaction with Capital Force in the first season. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see, you know, when there's a second season, like what will come of Alexa's character? Cause it's like, you know, we don't really get to see, like, you know, we all think of like Storm immediately or like maybe Shuri, but like there's not a whole lot of like, um, woman of color um, superheroes. And so to have not only her, but other members of Capital Force who are, you know, black and brown and queer and trans um, is really lovely. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really pumped to see, because as it already has a second season written, so, um, you know, I'm ready to, to jump back into that hot ass jumpsuit. <laughs> yeah, it was really hot. It's, a, yeah, oh man. Just shooting in the summer when you're in, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, online ordered sparkly jumpsuits that just we had like coke cans on their on their necks being like please don't die please don't die we're in a hot warehouse please don't die and they didn't think think uh but yeah um in the making of cap before well and yes uh, yes uh, uh, kira you had what was one of my favorite lines uh in what i've seen so far and that is uh and you, you kind of made reference to it to the situation a second ago i think uh you're asked uh, you throw uh, a knockout bomb uh, with gas and it knocks everyone out and uh, one of your 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 uh, co-stars in uh, Kappa Force in, in the actual Kappa Force asks you uh, um, why didn't you stop the fight sooner and you say do you want to fighting makes me horny <laughs> <laughs> I thought whoa that's a great line yeah um, Addison um, yeah Alexa is like she likes sex which is great like and I feel like that's also not really the role that like the black friend really gets to play in a lot of um comedies like they're usually like the 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 one who like can't get laid and like doesn't have a partner and it's just like there to kind of be the foil to the to the like hot white girl um and she gets to be the hottest like i feel like she's the member kind of force who like knows that she's hot and like isn't ashamed of it and is really confident uh, which is not a role i've ever really gotten to play before so that was really cool i thought that was a line that thor might have said in ragnarok just for the record <laughs> i mean it, maybe that kind of that was the if first they hire addison for the next one i mean you uh-huh, know, yeah. that was the that was the film where he he, he really kind of loosened up quite a bit and t- yeah. uh, taika uh, watiti uh wouldn't surprise me so let's let's make sure they don't steal your line now that it's out there but it's a great line yeah yeah. Um, I think give Addison some money. Some shit. Yes, yes. He would, would be willing to look answer. the other way if they lifted the line for a few bucks, I think. Well, no, I mean, I would like to write for it. I mean, it's like it wants to co write with me. Like, that's cool. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what, what Kira said, you know, it's funny. It's like we only had 46, what we have is like the first season that's 46 minutes. And like, 
I have in my brain, which I don't want to, you know, in cases, let's say, like, turns into an hour-long show. Like, you know, what if? It's like dream big, you know. Um, just, like, I'm so excited to, like, get to explore, like, every character's facet of, like, what they get to involve in. Because, like, you know, I would say, like, what you get from the first season is, like, a taste of what could be. And there are, like, kernels and all these different characters that, like, I want to, like, grow and sparkle and, like, give their own their own moment. Like, every member of Kappa Force being one of them, like... I want to like, you know, expand like the douche storyline and make, and like obviously making everybody laugh, but like, I just like want to expand this universe, like versus tendrils. So crazy. And if I get like the ability or the want to do that, then I get to bring in other writers who are like, you know, like, of like those, like, like, um, those worlds that get to like create things with me. And then like, I can hopefully create that world and like on the back of like in my world, like with the people that I have writing and also like, be in like the front of the world as well so like everything looks like on screen what it does like in the creative process as well and that's the goal and uh okay uh jesse bradford tell me about the pop culture references throughout now the reason I, that jesse bradford of all people caught my caught my my ear was that he's been on the show oh really yeah he's been on the show i want to say when he was doing i think it was a jimmy smith show and i can't i can't remember the title you like, know, I'm a, I am I am a walking on to be of Jimmy Smith. Was it was it Code Black? Because that was no. the last thing that I know he's but was it Shooter? Because nope. I know he's just been on Shooter. Well, you know, I, I got to go back and I, I am to be in like every couple of months just to like keep up with my Jesse Bradford knowledge because it is very important to me that he's succeeding. <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> he's one of these you know, actors I, like a Kyle Bornheimer who seems to. There's somebody out there who really likes these guys and really That's wants it. them to succeed, and they get continuous work. And the yes. hope, I guess, somebody's hoping that eventually they're they're going to catch fire. But yeah, he he, he was on the show, and uh, I didn't actually realize he was in. Uh, That's the other thing that made me laugh. Uh, guys with kids. Oh yeah, no one does. No one. No one. No one knows. Speaking Which of Kyle Bornheimer, the star, the female star of Guys with Kids, was his wife in Worst Week. So anyway. Right. Go ahead. So uh, uh, tell me about Jesse Bradford. What in the hell did you keep bringing him up? Okay. So the real reason is because like when I first wrote, if anybody reads the script of Cap before us, I mean, Kieran knows is that I write jokes in the, in the stage directions that no one will ever see. And so I just kept harping on Jesse Bradford one, because I thought it was funny and two, because I miss him, you know, like he was in clock stoppers. He was in swim fan. He was in bring it on that half smile, like made me feel something in my downstairs area when I was like 11. So it's like, you know, like I was just like, I it was important to me that he works anyway. And I was just making a fun joke and I thought it was so dumb. And then, I literally created two characters. Well, initially, the, the cast of the first season was like 35 characters, and one to save money, and two because um, I wanted to be in it. Uh, I created like two characters to like encompass every single character that isn't one of the leads. And so all those stage direction jokes, or some of them anyway, I put into these uh, students, student one and student two. And then we, I used that, to, and I was just like, that'd just be funny if there's like a walking IMDb of Jesse Bradford. And so that's kind of what our characters were, is to just be a walking IMDb of Jesse Bradford. And <laughs> when people get it, they really laugh. And some people, they just go, Phew. Right. Um, but like, because like our guy playing Luke, his real idea is this guy named Luke, who's like kind of like, you think of like the love interest, like he's like the Jesse Bradford of the world. He doesn't look like Jesse Bradford, but instead of like you think he's going to be the love interest, he's just like shat on relentlessly by everybody. And like he, uh, and so like everybody's just talking about him like through like Jesse Bradford's eyes. Um, and, um, you know, I just, I love Jesse Bradford. You know, are their beer cans, uh, the generic beer, have Jesse Bradford's face on them. I don't know if you noticed that I when you were watching. I did not see that, no. So, yeah, so that's another thing. There are, like, a lot of Jesse Bradford references. This is, like, just throughout, like, just visually. So, like, if you watch it again, I, I advise you to look out for it. But also just, like, I hope he's working. And, you know, there's a part for him in the second season of this guy named Hot Professor. His name is Hot. First name's Hot, last name Professor. And I really <laughs> want him. Yeah, this is in Top Professor. And he teaches generic studies 101. And, like, he, um, I think he's the douche's older brother. I have to go back and remember. I've got it all, like, mapped out. But the point is, like, if Jesse Bradford wants to be on Cap of Forest, he's going to be on Cap of Forest. Well, I, I had to watch to the end of the eighth episode because I was very curious. I mean, I, I want to do it anyway, but I was very curious to see okay. if there was suddenly going to be a walk-on with Jesse Bradford. And the funny, you know, well, the funny thing was, 
there's there's a the, there's a scene in the eighth episode. I don't want to give. Well, I'm probably going to give a little too much away here. But the douche and Brad, his uh, sidekick, right? Brad. Is uh, his jo- uh, uh, Brock is a sidekick. Brock, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Brock is his, his sidekick, and there's a there's a moment where uh, Brock asks the douche why he does a certain thing, and he says it's for the audience. He's like, what audience? You know, the audience. No, right. what are you talking about? And you know, he's like breaking the, the the fourth wall to let us know that he's in on the joke with us. And I thought, right. okay, if if Jesse Bradford's going to make an appearance, it's going to be right now. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Yeah. He just like walks through. No, we don't know Jesse Bradford. He did respond to our Instagram stories, but that's as far as we've gotten. With oh him. my god, that's a, that's that's great. I, didn't I mean, know. yeah, he was like, "What is this? I dig it." Uh, and oh. then, yeah, um, Addison loves doing things for the audience. Addison loves running jokes. Addison likes to give us shirtless men when there doesn't need to be shirtless men just because he knows we'll enjoy it. Um, Addison just wants to bless us. <laughs> I, I'm very tempted here to say that uh, I, I appreciate uh, certain directors who drop in shirtless women for, just because they know uh, some men will appreciate it. But I'm afraid if I say that, I'll be in trouble. So forget here's I even brought thing. it up. Yes, but here's the thing. I think nudity is great on television. One, if it's warranted, and two, if it's equal. As long as it's equal, it's fine, because that means we're not targeting one person versus right. another. Okay. Like, what what I did in Cap was just, like, I made sure it was students, because it's just, like, we're, like, reversing the trope. Much like, um, much like, uh, um, oh, my gosh, the, um, the Marvel show uh, with, like, the private eye, um, one of the Netflix ones. What am I? Why am I blanking uh, on this? Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Yeah, yeah, Jessica Jones. There's a scene where like she is like like drinking her whiskey while um while Luke Cage is like in the in the corner, just like basically shirtless except for his like you know his crotch area. And I'm just like, this is a reversal. This is funny because this is legitimately the shot that we've seen in millions of movies. Mm-hmm. And so like that reversal is interesting to me. And I think that is like what. Kira was saying in terms of, you know, why I did that kind of stuff. But also because it's fun. (laughs) I was just going to say that uh, I I love a show where there's something I like, but also my wife likes. And Jessica Jones came to mind. Uh, Mike Coulter, uh, who plays Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones, uh, Kristen Ritter. I mean, uh, you know, it's something for everyone. (laughs) You know, it's just... uh, Everyone in the cast of Cap Force is hot. That's true. I'm only friends with hot people. So, like, when I cast, (laughs) I only cast hot people. And I only work with hot people. No ugly people on the casting. Table. Yeah, I was like, no, sorry, you can't do that. <laughs> I got it. I, also, now, yeah, <laughs> I feel like we should probably take a minute before I let you guys go and talk about the lead, uh, uh, Madeline, right? Yeah. Tell mm-hmm. me a little about casting her and uh, and her character. Well, uh, Maddie's a friend of ours. She also went to Northwestern, um, and. Um, we actually had, it's funny, she came in so last minute because we had an actress drop out because of um, conflicts. And uh, she was in New York and she was just about to start Harry Potter on Broadway and she just finished Netflix's Alex Strangelove. So there's like this corner where I was like, Maddie, can you do this? I don't know. And she like put herself on tape and she was perfect. And then like uh, we, we flew out and she stayed in my room because again, I'm one of my close friends from college. Um, but her character is basically the Buffy cipher. She's Jen Silver and she will eventually, spoilers, come become a part. I mean, it's inevitable. It's like literally the hero's journey or whatever. And also like Cabin Force and spoilers are stupid because it's just meta humor. And so like, I don't think people watch it. They're like the story. Like, I mean, they, they do, but it's like, Again, like I didn't create something that was wildly original. Like you'll recognize all the parts of a superhero story. It's just like you know who gets to tell that story is now is now the different thing. But um, her name's Jen Silver. She uh, her parents mysteriously died in a car crash. Much like all of the other people at State University, everybody's parents had died of car crashes. Um, that's just a fun little joke. Um, but uh, basically, her grandmother, who was like an Olympian and also a secret member of Kappa Force, although she doesn't know that yet. Like, I didn't know that off. either. Damn. Wow. Yeah. Spoiler. Spoiler. What? Spoiler. Well, the idea is actually, technically, I'm pretty sure all of your parents were all like it's like a lineage type situation. So all of your parents were like members of Kappa Force and. It's like, like daughter to daughter, daughter to daughter, daughter to daughter. Um, yeah. So that's a little tidbit. But uh, she, yeah. So she's like, you know, uh, she's our Buffy cipher. She's like the new girl in town. She's 18. She's like fresh out of college. She doesn't want to fight. She just wants to live her normal college life. She's like, you know, falling in love with the lead hunky boy, Brad Michael James, who's like the se- like the senior frat, like bro extreme. But he's such a nice person. He like works with the American Cancer Society and like looks great shirtless. And then like Luke is like pining after her. But she's like basically everything like just like 
we follow her first day of school um, in this first kind of like season of show. Um, and, and she's, you know, yeah. Madeline. She's a badass motherfucking fighter, but like we don't know that yet. No, um, no. I, I enjoyed her a lot. Uh, now she's in the Harry Potter musical on Broadway. Now is that the same Harry Potter musical that Darren? Oh God, I can't remember his last name. Darren from no, Glee. No, it's not. So it's not a musical. It's like a show. It's oh. like a it's like a Broadway show, like in two parts, like as an extension of the books. Oh, that okay. That's the yeah, okay. So it's the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Cursed yeah, Child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I didn't. I, I, yeah. It was the way I saw it described. It sounded like the, yeah, the other yeah, one, yeah, yeah. which uh, yeah. I, I'm right. Not so familiar with that. No, no. Okay. Well, that's all right. All right. So before we wrap up, and 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 thank you guys for st- staying uh, a, a bit longer than we planned. Kira, what's up for you next? What are you What are you doing? Oh, I you know trying to pay off my credit card bills. Uh- <laughs> I was thinking more professionally, but okay. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. Um. So uh, as as I mentioned. I have a web series called The Right Swipe, the pilot episode of which is available on OTV, Open Television, which is a platform for artists of marginalized identities uh, who make uh, independent film and web series. Um, So you can check it out there. Episode two will be premiering uh, on Black Friday. We chose Black Friday because there's black people in the show, so we figure people will remember. Um, (laughs) And uh, we are going to be screening um, this weekend at uh, Austin Film Festival, um, which is going to be exciting. And... um, I am doing, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not in any like plays coming up in Chicago, but, um, I am going to be doing more, uh, I mean, I've been doing a lot of commercials, so you can see my face in a Wingstop commercial. Um, so check that out. If you get a craving for chicken, it's probably my fault. And, <laughs> and um, I got to Yeah. We're, we're trying to finish the last, uh, the three episodes of the right swipe. Um, so be on the lookout for those. And that's pretty much it. You know, um, it's hard to say what's going to come up as a film actor because like, you know, you, you get cast in something and you start working on it like three days later. So I don't know yet. <laughs> okay very good well but you really you really should check out the right swipe it is it is really phenomenal and really funny and Kira is great in it and she also co-wrote it um and is uh truly like one of the funniest things that i've seen in a while and so is- i really i really if i could like oh, you guys should check that out does it have a website or yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so you can find us on. Uh, so the website is weRO.tv. So uh, that's the OTV website. Um, or you can find uh, our website, which is the dash right dash swipe dot com. And there's also another Kappa Force actor in it, uh, Patrick, who plays uh, the other student, that mm-hmm. the gay chorus member. Um, so he doesn't get to wear shirts very often in our series either. So that's great. Got it. And uh, thank Addison, you, thank you, uh, Addison. <laughs> Addison, what's up for you next? What are you working on? Yeah, uh, so I've got a trilogy of like queer Black Mirror shorts that I've been in kind of creation with the past couple of years. Two of them have been playing the festival circuit, so like that is where they're going with that. And then the third one's now in in post. But um, and so keep at and I. If you ever go to a film festival, maybe you'll see that there. Uh, but I'm really proud of those. And my my next big one, I'm in development for a horror feature, uh, and uh, that is something that I'm currently um, yeah almost done with like the the draft, and then we'll start doing the casting thing and hopefully shooting next year. But um, yeah, that one's called Hypochondriac, and it's about a guy who loses his mind when he convinces himself he's dying of a terminal illness. Mm-hmm. Um, so like all genre related. It's funny, but it's also, you know, kind of a horror thriller. But yeah, so that's kind of what's up. All right. Well, folks, uh, listen, uh, you can find uh, Addison Hyman's new TV comedy series, uh, Kappa Force, on uh, Pluto TV, Zumo, and Reverie, beginning October 27th, 2019. And uh, That's so soon. That's three days. Three yeah. days. Three days from, from when we're recording this. It's probably about the day that this will air. So something oh, like great. that. So, so now, now it's screening now. Go to Reverie. Go <laughs> well, right now. What are you doing? Hold out of this. And um, uh, okay. is there is there a website for Kappa Force? Yes, uh, www.kappaforce.com. You could also follow us on Instagram at Kappa Force Series, or if you go to Facebook, at Cap, like just write Kappa Force. I'm assuming will be the only thing, but like you know, who can say? Uh, we are, we are the only thing. So yeah, yeah. follow us there. And, and, the, and the, then are you each individually in social media, Kira? Are you? So how do well, we, we fi- Kira? How do we find you? Yeah. Um, so my, uh, Instagram is at Kira K 
K-Y-R-A dot A dot Jones. I finally changed it from whatever ratchet thing it was to my actual name. So it's easier to find. Uh, you can also find the right swipe at, at uh, the right swipe uh, underscore TV on Instagram. Um, Instagram is my main social media. Um, but if you want to dig and find like my MySpace or Zanga or whatever, go for it. So. All right. and, and Addison, what about you? How do we find yeah. you on social media? You can find me. I mean, I'm, Instagram is my main thing as well. I'm at Addy Bear, A D D Y Bear, spelled like the animal, because um, I have facial hair. Uh, five. So Addy Bear Five uh, is my Insta, and then yeah, obviously Kappa Four Series. But you can they're connected. You can find them both. But yeah, yeah. excellent. Well, um, Addison Hyman and uh, Kira Jones, thank you both so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Thank, thank you so much. Having- yeah, this is great. Yeah.